All right, so in the next part of 55A, we're gonna make this uh, automobile ox axle, which looks a lot harder than it really is. And that's universal sound that I am recording at 11.50 a.m. Uh, during a uh, during a period seven class. So before you make this part though, make sure you are switched to the automobile ox project so that it saves with your other automobile ox parts and uh, then we'll start the new part. Okay. Now this one's a little little trickier. There's a lot of dimensions that you have to make on this particular part uh, when you're doing the sketch, and the sketch is really the hardest part. Once you do the sketch, then there's really two other things to do before all is good. So again, we're gonna, just like we started with the last one, we're gonna use an axis of rotation, and this time I'm gonna make the axis of rotation here, and I'm just gonna use it coincident to the axis just for convenience, and I'm going to make it a construction line just like last time. Now, if you try to sketch the whole geometry first, and then come in with dimensions, it may be difficult for you to do. So I'm going to start by sketching some of the geometry, which is again all horizontal and vertical lines, so don't worry about any auto constraints. And then I'm going to come in with some dimensions. Okay, so that's what I'm going to start with for now. And then we're going to add in some relevant dimensions to this particular um, piece. So it's 0.33 and then now I've got again it's given me diameters and what it looking at and this is what I'm looking on page four by the way of your packet uh, for this particular sketch and it gives you some diameters and, and notice that again we're only sketching one half and the reason we're sketching one half is because we're gonna make a uh, do a revolve to create this peg and we don't really have to sketch the bottom half too because if we do it's the same exact thing on top and bottom we really only need the top and then we're just gonna do a 360 degree all the way around. So um, I've done this. Now, it, it, what I was mentioning before was that it gives us diameters. And it tells us the diameter as in distance from here to the distance of the edge down here. So again, just like before, if I want to know the distance from here to the center line, I just cut the diameter in half. So 0.19 in half is 0.095. And it moves my axis up, and that's fine. And then the distance from this line to this line is going to be point, uh, well, this is 0.25, so half of that is 0.125. And then this line here tells us the distance and that, that line to that line is 0.29, so half of that is 0.145. So that's the start. Now let's go ahead and make some more geometry. So we added those in, those in there. And we'll do, and notice that I'm making sure that I don't make this coincident to the bottom line here because it is a little different. So you'll see that on your sketch when you, uh, when you get to this particular part. Now I'm gonna stop here, and there's a reason I'm stopping here because uh, the, the hardest part is this line that comes after this. So actually I'm gonna make that last line just a little shorter and make sure it wasn't. Okay, that's good, I did that on purpose, just like that. Now let's go ahead and put in uh, some relevant dimensions. Now, first thing we can t uh, tell here is that from here to here is point f uh, 0.05. So I put that in, and I'm gonna just basically copying the dimensions that are listed um, on the uh, on the sketch. So 0.07, whoops, 0.07 on there. And then um, I believe I've got what I can put in here. I'm just double checking. Yep, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to start by doing the left side here. And the reason I'm doing that is because you'll notice on the sketch that there's a slanted line here. And the slanted line is a little difficult to put in manually, um, or at least accurately. So I'm going to actually save that for last and make that sort of so it's driven. Um, now this particular line is coincident to the edge here, so you actually can allow that constraint, and that's okay. And it's also coincident here, so we can allow that there uh, on that. And oops, a little too long I made that, so let's try that again. We put it up here and then lock it to that, and then okay, here we go. So now I'm going to go over here and make sure it's horizontal, vertical. Uh, horizontal and, and I'm gonna make sure that's auto that's not automatically constrained to that edge there and I'm just gonna kind of zoom in here and put a little line there uh, and that should be good okay so I'm gonna stop at that point now let's add some dimensions to this uh, to this piece so uh, I'm gonna add this dimension first and this dimension here is 0.19 and then the distance from here to here is 0.25. Okay. And then the th thickness here, diameter, well, let's see here. The distance from here 
to the center line is 0.125, which is in. And then the distance from here to here is 0.15, because that's half of 0.3. And then the other thing we can actually add in here is this line right here is a, is a hundredth of an inch. And I can add that in as well. OK, so that's pretty good. Now I'm going to add the line. And actually, before I add the line, I'm going to add the one more dimension. And that's the distance from the top of here to the center line. And that dimension is 0.2, and it's half a 0.4. And then um, I'm actually going to, rather than add this here, actually, no, that, that should work. If I, that, I'll, I'll leave that there. That should work. So we'll put that, and we'll put that, go ahead and connect them here. And again, it's going to be a, a sloped edge. And I'm going to use the, that's good. That looks good. I use the zoom function to just make sure I got that in the right spot. A um, couple more dimensions to add, and that's this overall dimension here is 0.88. So I'm going to hit this line first, and then I'm going to move over and hit the far left line here, and we'll make that 0.88. And that should change it just ever so slightly. All right, let's make sure I've got all the dimensions I need. Looks pretty good um, on here. Great. OK, so let's go ahead and finish the sketch. And now we've got this geometry and we've got this axis of rotation. So again, we'll go to the Revolve feature, just like the last video. We've got the geometry automatically selected. We just have to select the axis of rotation. And we do it. And we get this really, really cool looking piece um, when all is said and done. Great. OK. So now you're looking at this and going, oh, that, that was that, that's pretty cool. There's one little, 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 little tiny thing you have left to do on here. And if you'll notice on the, um, there's the bell again. <laughs> if you'll notice that the cut, there's a cut on the end of the axle here. And that cut is actually easier to model than, than it looks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that end here, and I'm going to create a sketch that's on the sketch plane. So create a 2D sketch, and we're going to put it on the sketch plane. All we have to do here is sketch a couple of rectangles uh, right down the middle. We can use the since that, that's one of the reasons why I use the axis, uh, the horizontal axis, as my reference point to make sure I got a uh, reference on here. So actually, I'm going to use the vertical axis and I'm going to make a line through the part as a reference, and I'm going to make that a construction line. And then I'm going to create two lines to model the cuts, and I'm going to basically connect them from point to point on the uh, projected geometry. So I go to line, and I'm going to pick, oh, I forgot to speak into projected geometry. I need the geometry on my sketch, so I'll do that. Now I will two vertical lines, and I'm going to make them on the bottom as well. And all I'm doing basically is, and I'm going to come in with dimensions in a second, but all I'm doing basically is the, um, I'm basically modeling where the parts are going to be cut away on this axis. And now this rectangle is 0.04 in uh, width. And it should, and I'm going to double check and make sure that it's the same distance away from my construction line. It should be 0.2. Yep, it is. Okay. So that's good. And then these should automatically have updated. And they have. And again, I'll just make sure that it's in the middle by using, yep, perfect. OK. So those lines are in. And uh, that this should be sufficient. Let's, let's make sure uh, it is. And if it's not, we'll fix it later. But it looks like it's pretty good. OK. So we'll select that. And we'll also select this. And again, since we're doing a cut, not an add, we're going to select a cut, but we're not going to cut that deep. The thickness or the depth of the cut is 0.2 inches, as says in the sketch. And we hit OK. And there you have it. There's our uh, hitch peg with the cuts in there. OK, so that's the second part. And uh, right now, we're just going to create the part. You, can, of course, can change it to the material as you see fit. And we'll save this, and we'll call this the uh, axle and your initials. Make sure you don't type your initials. Make sure you type you know, the two letters that make your initials. OK? All right, and that's that. We'll see you in the next video.